Hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day to you, wherever you are in the world, whatever you are up to. Hi, <laughs> I'm Catherine Oster and welcome to this week's edition of Coffee Chat. So what we're going to chat about this week is talk to the entities. Talk to the entity. So I, I just renewed my Talk to the Entity Certified Facilitator training for the third time. So this will be my third year facilitating these classes. And they are such, such a gift beyond words. Um, I am so grateful for these tools. I use them every single day of my life, actually. They have created so much more awareness for me around hey good morning Ross it created so much more awareness for me around things like especially with people and um and animals I mean entities literally can affect everything um and yourself like your own emotions how you're feeling can be just a sign that there's entities around and when you start to even consider that or acknowledge that and start to use the tools from the class, which is to clear them, to communicate with them, to receive from them and to cooperate with them. Your life just starts to get a whole lot more easier and magical actually. Um, and so, yeah, so this week I actually wanted to dive into the book, talk to the entities of the book, and then I just flipped to a chapter. We're going to read a chapter out of the book this week. And it is called Robin. Um, let's see, let me see here. It's funny because I titled, <laughs> yeah, we're going to read about Robin today. Okay, here we go. So, and this book was written, I should give you a little more information. This book was written by Shannon O'Hara who is, um, she's the creator of Talk to the Entities. And in fact, it's so amazing to hear her talk about it because she's like, I didn't create any of this. I wanted to feel better in my life. I wanted to quit feeling like I wanted to die. And, um, and her dad, Gary Douglas, her stepdad, is the founder of Access Consciousness. And Access Consciousness is all about quest asking questions in your life, empowering you to know what you know, and um, not coming to the conclusion that things are just a certain way, but to question everything and to ask questions and to ask for things and to, to clear our own decisions, judgments, conclusions that create limitations around what can show up for us in our life and how to change things. So he, he facilitated her in working with her capacities with entities, her awareness of entities. Hey, good morning. And, um, and out came this whole curriculum of Talk to the Entities and this book. And she's also written another book called The Beings of Light. So Talk to the Entities, this book, is all about Shannon's experience. Like how she started handling entities in her life and the tools that she's used. And there's a lot of information here. And it really opened my eyes up to a lot of things. Um, so that. So if you would like more information about Talk to the Entities you can go to talktotheentities.com and you can find a lot of different things there. There's some free classes. Um, you can order the book off Amazon or um, off the Talk to the Entities website. Um, it's a really great read and it gives you a lot of information. Anyway, okay, Robin. Robin was one of my stepfather's clients and my stepfather referred her to have a session with me. We made a time to have the session over the phone because she was in Texas and I was in California. Robin began by telling me that her mother was very sick and on her deathbed. She said that her mother had agreed to some changes in her will and Robin had taken the will out to be signed after the changes were drafted. After speaking with her mother that morning, Robin arrived out at the property in the afternoon. 
Hours of long discussion and persuasion ended in Robin leaving, totally perplexed, without a signed will. She spoke with her mother again the next day, and her mother asked her why she had not came over, like she said she was going to. Robin was completely blown away. As far as Robin knew, Alzheimer's disease was not one of her mother's debilitating conditions, and she had not really experienced her mother in this way before. Robin explained to her mother that she had come out and that they had spoken, but her mother began to become agitated by the whole conversation. She honestly had no recollection of Robin coming the previous afternoon. She told Robin to come again and she would sign the will. So the next day, out Robin went to her mom's house and again there was a long discussion about signing the will to no avail. Hey, good morning, mom. Robin began to get severely worried about her mother's mental health and called her mother's physician that afternoon. Her mother's doctor said he had not encounter this behavior, but would look into it during his next visit. Robin was well on her way to thinking her mother was basically losing her mind. But that night, Robin had a dream. <clears throat> she dreamed she was sitting in the living room at her mother's house, but there were three of her mother. They did not all look like her mother, but she knew that they were all her mom. And mostly she remembered one of the three ladies saying over and over again, I am your mother, not them. And the next morning when she woke up, Robin immediately called my stepdad because she now knew that her mother had more <clears throat> than one entity running the show, so to speak. The next morning when she woke up, Robin immediately called my stepdad because she now knew that her mother had more than one entity running the show, so to speak. Oh, my stepdad confirmed this and recommended that Robin took a session with me. Apparently we needed to read that paragraph twice. As soon as Robin started talking about the whole thing, I immediately became aware of the different beings around her mom. I explained to Robin that her mother was not losing her mind. Her mom had what my stepdad and I referred to as having multiple occupancy, meaning there was more than one being in there with her. This is more common than you would think. When someone has a hard time making decisions and always has to consult the committee in their head, it is because they have multiple entities in there with them making decisions about things. This also contributes to certain people having behaving one way, one time, and a completely different way other times. <clears throat> this is because it's not the same being all the time. There are different beings. Schizophrenia and multiple personality, multiple personality disorder are extreme cases of this sort. I asked Robin if her mom had exhibited subtler forms of this sort of behavior in the past. For instance, did her mom seem like different people at different times, or did she forget about things she was supposed to know about? Robin hesitantly replied with a, well, yes, actually. As a matter of fact, my brothers and I used to joke about our mother's other personality. <clears throat> Sometimes she was the nicest, most considerate person you could imagine. And other times, she was like a totally different person. Oh my God, I thought they were just saying that. Oh, this is too weird. <laughs> I laughed and Robin just sat on the other end of the line a bit stunned. <clears throat> she asked, how does this happen? I told her it was not actually that unusual and it can occur when someone decides at some point that they don't want to live anymore. For example, in essence, they put up a for rent sign out on their body and another being can come on board. And if the original occupant doesn't really notice what has happened, 
he or she can just stay on as if nothing has changed. But in actuality, there is another being participating in their life now, making decisions and dealing with people. It can also happen when someone has a big accident or surgery or some other kind of trauma to the body. This can allow another being to walk in. It usually occurs when someone has decided they need help with their life or they cannot do something on their own. They will bring in another being, consciously or unconsciously, to help with things. But if someone is unconscious about it, they can end up letting the other being or beings run the show and everything can get a bit jumbled up. Hey Lynn, good morning. We're just reading a chapter of Talk to the Entities this morning. I then explained that the mix-up with the will was quite an honest one. Her mom really did not have any recollection of having the conversations with Robin about the will because there was another entity running that part of consciousness of her consciousness or life. Next time she went to her mother's house to get the will signed, she had to ask for the entity that was actually going to sign the will to be present. All she had to do was ask in her head, not out loud. Nothing fancy, just a simple request. That way she would be able to get what she was after. Robin asked if there was some way to clear the other entity from her mom. I told her, yes, you can clear entities, but if the person has some sort of commitment to the entity, they will tend to not let that entity go, especially if they feel the entity is doing them a service or keeping them company in some way. And this was the case with her mother and her entity. Robin's mom apparently had an entity that dealt with her finances. I know this sounds a bit bizarre, but that is what was happening. All her mom had to do was decide at some point for whatever reason that she didn't like dealing with money or that she was incapable of doing it or something like this and voila, another being came to do it. We ended the session with Robin a bit stunned but ready to try out her new information. She reported back to me a few days later that indeed she went to her mother's house, <clears throat> asked for the entities that had agreed to sign the will, and lo and behold, her mother signed the will. So there's a little tip for you. <clears throat> when you're dealing with someone that is very difficult, <clears throat> ask for the being that will give you what you want to be most present. Weird, but true. Hey, good morning, Jody. We just finished up. Um, yeah. So for those of you just jumping on, if you wanted to go back and listen to the whole chapter, it's very interesting and gives a lot of interesting information about things. <laughs> and I'll also pop the talk to the entities, um, dot com website in the description of this video or in the comment below it. Check that out. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me, you know, I know that this can seem, I mean, it is weird. Um, it's weird, but if you're willing to kind of have weird conversations, it can create a lot of ease and clarity in your life. Um, but again, if you have any questions, let me know I'm here. And if you're interested in an intro class, learning more about this kind of conversation and these tools, you can search for classes at talktotheentities.com and I'll have some coming up. I'm going to be doing some probably later this year and then I'll be in Calgary February 2024 for an intro and beginning. So yeah, anyway, have a great Friday and a great weekend everybody and uh, I will see you later. Bye bye for now.